Hey, folks, and welcome to another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Alan Saunders. That is Nick Farabaugh. Zachary Smith, he's taking an afternoon swim. Uh, I got a picture, uh, actually a video from Smitty of his his studio with just water everywhere. I don't know if he had some kind of – it's not raining here in western Pennsylvania today, so I'm guessing he had some kind of uh, plumbing issue but uh best of luck to smitty as he bails out his uh, studio there and uh appreciate nick for jumping back in and filling in nick how you been i've been doing well i've been doing well um it's, it's always fun on the steelers beat uh we've had some good times too on the road early in the year because we've only it feels like we've only been on the road two home games <laughs> it's just been Home game. It's been the four long, longest road games. The four furthest road games are the first four road games. I don't remember that ever happening. I don't. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of travel early. I, I enjoy the travel. I'm glad we're getting the travel out of the way in the non-weather and holiday season. I really appreciate that. And also, I'm really appreciating uh, my travel schedule this weekend. I'm going to L.A. to cover Penn State at USC on Saturday and then to Vegas to cover the Steelers on Sunday. I was talking about Firemouth about that. Fired up about uh, getting a chance to cover a top 10 college football game on Saturday. And I've never been to the USC Coliseum, so... Um, I'm looking forward to that. You you set me up with some uh, some places to check out there, so uh, I'm I'm hopeful for that. Nick, let's talk about practice today first and foremost. Steelers had a bunch of news coming out of this. Ten players not dressed for practice. I, I'm I'm I see. I was wearing red today, so I they, I was just it was so that I didn't get drafted onto the scout team because it was it was pretty much anybody and anybody available could have got pulled out there, but you know uh, no contact for me. Uh, five of those guys, thankfully just being rested, but five, another five. And, and it really looks like six or seven guys that are not going to play against the Las Vegas Raiders this week. Uh, we knew about Nick Herbig and Alex Highsmith, Cordell Patterson, Michael Pruitt and Jalen Warren did practice today. Um, so it looks like maybe there's a chance for Warren, but the rest of these guys, I'm, you know, not, not, not really feeling good about, about the seven or eight. So, uh, or so injured guys there. Yeah, DeMarvin Leal also. Yeah, DeMarvin the, Leal, yeah. Um, so how about it? Three of the four top edge rushers on the team are DNPs today. Uh, not great, right? Not great. And we were able to talk to Jeremiah Moon and Ade Ogundeji today. And those are probably the next two guys up on your roster. Isaiah Loudermilk, too. Um, we'll get looks out there. I don't think Isaiah Loudermilk is going to get a ton of looks out there. Probably obvious run situations, I would imagine him. But I wouldn't expect him to be out there on third and 15, rushing the passer. Um, because I feel like when you're playing the edge, um, it's easier to be a run defender from inside to out than it is pass rush. Pass rushing, there's just more space, right? And so you need that. You need a speed rush to play on the outside for the most part. And Milk is just 6'7", 300 pounds. So it's just going to be hard to have great speed rush at that size. Um, and, and so I'm interested to see how this all goes. As you mentioned, Jalen Warren, maybe um, we'll see. He looked good. Like, I mean, it wasn't just like he was like just limited. I mean, he was cutting, he was jumping, he was sprinting, he was running routes. I mean, he looked pretty good. I, he said he felt great after practice too. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't close the door on Jalen Warren. You know how tough he is now. That might be a situation where Mike Tomlin defends him from himself because Jalen told me he got hurt in the first quarter of that Chargers game and didn't get pulled into like the late third, early fourth. So maybe Mike Tomlin's just protecting Jalen Warren, but uh, I wouldn't completely close the door on Jalen Warren just yet. Yeah, the other thing about having Moon and Ade in there is that's two bigger guys. And so like I, like, I feel like they'll be okay against the run. Probably it, it's the more the like I, I'm more concerned about their pass rush than their run stopping abilities. Um, maybe compared to like a guy like Herbig, or if say they had brought in Kyron Johnson, who by the way is on a practice squad, and they decided not to make that move. A little curious to me. I w thought he was a surprise cut when they cut him. I really thought, given this opportunity here, they'd bring him back. But Steelers rolling with what they got. Uh, we'll see how it rolls out for Moon. And Ogan Deji, I agree with you about Jalen Warren. I think Mike Tomlin's going to be careful with him, especially because it's been back-to-back -back injuries, and uh, you just worry about the cumulative effect of of trying to play at less than a hundred percent. I know the running game is not where they want it to be. A tough week. Uh, I mean, I, I get a better week than the previous one for Najee Harris, but I still don't think where he feels like he should be. Um, 
and, and Cordero Patterson not looking like he's going to play. Man, it'd be nice to be able to call up like just like how are they even going to fill a game day roster with eight guys out? It's going to be difficult. Um, so, but I would assume if Warren doesn't play, you're looking at calling up two running backs again, or calling up a running back again. So, a running running back, one edge rusher. That's it. That's the list. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Warren would be a huge benefit. What do you make of the quarterback situation? I know Russell Wilson, full participant today, as promised. Uh, no, no first team work, as promised. Uh, where do you see this going from here for the rest of this week? I did want to mention one more thing. You do the math there. Running back coming up and an edge rusher coming up. No Brandon Johnson, no Cordero Patterson. Could be the week we see Roman Wilson finally get yeah. at. Um, yeah, well, so, uh, everybody healthy on the 53 basically has to play. Right. So Roman's probably going to gonna play. It's, oh, maybe not play, but at least dress. So yeah. um, you're going to probably see that, um, which is interesting. So we'll see what happens there. As for the quarterback situation, um, the wording that Mike Tomlin used absolutely leads you to believe this is going to be Justin Fields this week. Russell Wilson is getting full practice with the twos to not disrupt Justin with the ones. That is the exact wording. Um, that is a Justin Fields is going to start flag going up right as you hear it. Um, so I definitely feel like he's going to play this week. I'm still – I'm not even sure Mike Tomlin knows what he's going to do beyond, beyond this week yet. I think this is another chance for – Justin Fields against one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. Now, they're one of the better run defenses in the NFL, but this pass defense for the Raiders has just been absolutely putrid. Um, everybody that they have gone up against, it hasn't mattered if it was the Denver Broncos who are one of the worst passing offenses in the NFL. They have been absolutely torched every single week. Um, and so without Christian Wilkins this week as well, the Steelers should be able to pass the ball. So if Justin Fields has an explosive day, plays well like he should, um, you know, you expect George Pickens to bounce back this week. You expect a lot of things this week to happen and go right for Justin Fields. So I think this is another audition for him. And so I'm not sure we know what's going to happen yet. Now, Russell Wilson is obviously still listed as QB1 on the depth chart. I think if we see Justin Fields have a similar game to what he did in Dallas, I imagine that they will turn to Russell Wilson if he has another game like he had in, say, Indianapolis or against the Chargers where he plays well then I think we could see Justin Fields get a starting gig here. Um, but I don't think Mike Thomas made a decision yet, so we'll see. But I think this week we're looking at two. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be tough. Like The fact that Mike Tomlin wouldn't commit to more than one day of Wilson being a full participant, to me, really kind of spells out exactly how like unsure they are about his health at this point. Uh, and I, I think the other part of this you have to take into consideration is the rust factor. It's now been over a month since Russell Wilson had a full practice. He also missed almost all training camp. So, like, this isn't a guy that's practiced a whole bunch this year, uh, and it's been a while since he's practiced. I think it will take more than just one or two or three full practices before Mike Tomlin is willing to turn it to Russell Wilson, and I'm not even sure that he's going to get those three full practices this week, even at this point. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think we're going to see Justin Fields this week. I also think we are coming to a point where Mike Tomlin is going to be forced to make some kind of decision. Probably won't happen this week, but I think it's coming sooner rather than later. And I, I wrote about this this morning at SteelersNow.com, but I, I just think the fact that they haven't really opened up this offense for Justin Fields in an appreciable way tells me there is still like a feeling that like that they're going to go back to Russell Wilson. I just, I don't know. It doesn't feel like they are operate like they're operating this offense. Like they don't trust Justin Fields not to screw it up unless they have to, unless they're trailing. That's the only time they've really uh, kind of gone to him in a significant way. Do you do you are you seeing this the same way I'm seeing this that this this feels like a Steelers team that is just waiting for for three to get back? I don't know if it's waiting for three to get back I, because I don't know if they're going to open up the offense with Russ in there. I, I don't I, I just don't know how much more there is to the Russ offense than there is it to the Justin offense. Um, I think they're fairly similar players. I, I just I think Russ maybe is a more consistent drop back passer, but like, I don't think Russ getting in suddenly opens up the play action game, which has been their biggest issue on offense. Justin has been way better as a drop back passer than he has been as a play action passer, which might be, I don't know, Alan, it, like when we saw this at training camp, I thought it would be the opposite of that. I thought you, Justin would maybe be a really good play action passer because he struggled in the drop back game more than he struggled um, in the play action game in Chicago. And so 
it's kind of interesting that he's actually taking strides as a drop back passer. Um, and when they have actually opened up the offense, when they've been down, like oh, Justin's been fine. Like, you know, they score two touchdowns against the Cowboys in the second half. He honestly kind of put it, the team on his back against Indy um, by making plays out of structure. Like, I just don't know where the Russ up, like people ask me, what is different that Russ can do that Justin can't. And I just, I, I, I struggle to answer with a ton of significant things. First of all, do they lose the QB run game with Russ in there? Is his, is his, because if they do, I mean, I just don't know how that's going to work out because Russ is then by as a byproduct also probably going to take more sacks because the pass protection has not been very good. Um, and so there's just a lot of questions I have. If Russ can maybe become, you know, more consistent uh, passer for them, particularly targeting the middle of the field on some of the concepts that they have, I can understand that move. But I just don't know where the openness of the Russ offense is versus the openness of of the Justin offense. I think that's my thing. Yeah. I mean, I think the things that I would expect Russ to be better at would be being more decisive and getting rid of the ball quick, quicker and, and play action passing. I mean, I think the play action passing has been atrocious. I, I feel like that's been the, the biggest thing that you expected from an Arthur Smith offense that we have not seen at all. And I would think that given Russell Wilson's previous success in that kind of offense, that he should be able to bring that to the table. Um, but like, that's really the only two, th- th- like, that's where I just think to me, even if the player isn't better, if there is more faith from the coaching staff, that will lead to better results. I think where Russ would be better in the play action game would not be from the under center stuff, which I think is the concerning part because a lot of Arthur Smith's pass game specifically on play action is under center stuff. And we've seen Justin may have some absolutely wild, crazy throws, um, like the one to Van was absolutely not a good decision. He missed a crosser to Calvin Austin on an understanding play action too. But Russ, we've talked about this in training camp too. He, he, it's hard to see over the offensive line. So I think if Arthur Smith wants that to be better with Russ, we're going to see pistol and shotgun play action, which is something we haven't seen a ton of with Justin. Uh, so maybe that's where the openness comes. Uh, with it. Justin did not play well against the Cowboys. The all 22 was not very, uh, very promising for him. Um, I thought it was definitely his worst game um, of the five that he's played. And I think he had promising things in the four before that. Um, And so we'll see how he bounces back here. Um, But I am skeptical still about how you mold Russell Wilson in with Arthur Smith's play action stuff because I just haven't seen the play action come out of shotgun or pistol yet where I think Russ would be best out of play action. Like he was last year in Sean Payton's offense. He was good out of play action in the pistol and in the shotgun. So I'm interested to see if that would be something that they would kind of use. Steelers also probably need to be running the ball a little bit better to make play action more of a serious threat. Um, We do know who is going to play quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders, announced today by head coach Antonio Pierce, that it will not be Gardner Minshew. It will be instead Aiden O'Connell. Nick, what do you make of this, and and what can you tell us about Aiden O'Connell? Well, Aiden O'Connell is an interesting player. I mean, listen, he had a few starts last year at over 2,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, 7 picks. Um, Not super reckless with the football, so, I mean, that's a good start. Minshew has – that has been Minshew's biggest thing. He has just thrown some awful interceptions. Uh, Like the one to Patrick Sertan last week was just abysmal um, on the goal line. Uh, This this offense has been able to kind of move the ball at times. Like they beat the Ravens, of course. They beat the Browns. Um, They've competed with some teams, but they got blown out last week by the Broncos um, just because they couldn't really do anything. Uh, with Minshew at quarterback, I think Minshew's interesting because he's a veteran presence that when he is hot, he is hot, right? Like, remember the Steelers last year when he got hot, just torched him? O'Connell's kind of a steady Eddie, I guess, is the way I would put it. And he has more arm talent. Like, O'Connell can definitely fit it into some really tight windows. His pocket presence is really good. Um, One thing that the Raiders have really struggled with this year has been pass pro, and I know, you know, the Steelers are – Obviously going to be missing Herbig and Highsmith and Liao, but they still have Cam Hayward, Keanu Benton, Larry Ogunjobi, and uh, and TJ Watt. So significant concerns in the pass pro department. Um, Aiden O'Connell had the sixth lowest pressure to sack ratio after in the NFL after he came in as a starter. So he's good at managing the pocket, can step it up, can throw with some anticipation. Um, so there's some things that work with Aiden O'Connell, and he can make tight window throws as well. 
Um, you'll see on some of his film throwing over the middle to Jacoby Myers. He's anticipating windows behind linebackers. Um, but, you know, he's it, there's still a lot meat, meat left on the bone. He misses open receivers at times. Um, he'll hold onto the ball for a tick too long. There's there's some things to worry about with Aiden O'Connell, too, if you're the Raiders. Yeah, the, the pressure thing. Thayer Munford uh, has been out at right tackle, and uh, Michael Mayer, who is their sort of bigger blocking year of their tight ends. Obviously, Brock Bowers, the rookie, is a pretty dynamic receiver threat. But uh, and, and then Harrison Bryant is their other one. He, and so it's like, it's not like blocking tight end. You know, it's not tight ends that you feel good about in the in the pass protection game in terms of their chip ability. Um, a, ba- a backup and a rookie at, at you know at uh, at, at tackle. And, uh, and and so I think this is, you know, let's talk about the Steelers' pass rush, right? Like, can they get this done without Herbig and Highsmith? And where is it just Moon and and Ade Ogundeji? Or can they find ways in the interior or by blitzing more, which they've done very little, and I talked about this morning on Steelers Morning Rush, uh, to get some pressure without Herbig and Highsmith? Blitzing could actually fit what Minka Fitzpatrick said when he said to simplify the defense. Well, one way to do that is to just play straight up man coverage behind that. So that could be one way to do it. Bring some heat. Uh, I think they're going to need it. I I think they're going to need to specifically overload Watts side, not Moon side. Now they could, but they have a few really good blitzers at inside linebacker that they should utilize. And Beanie Bishop is also a pretty darn good slot blitzer. So they have a few really interesting tools at their disposal. First of all, while Peyton Wilson will never play the edge, he has been that overload blitzer off that side so many times at NC State. Um, Patrick Queen's been a very good blitzer from the interior. You know Elaine Roberts is an absolute wrecking ball. Um, and so you just have options. I think what they should do a little bit more, and I think something that they probably haven't done enough of, is just general twists up front. I think they've been doing a lot more just straight rushing. So you pin your ears back, go at the guy in front of you. Uh, get some twists in there. Like I think part of their blitzing that they need to do is is how to blitz four a little bit more creatively, right? Sometimes you could drop out a guy, like drop Jeremiah Moon out, and then okay, here comes Peyton Wilson off the edge or something, right? It's not something that you like about Moon in coverage a whole bunch, but when they had Herbig out there, absolutely he can cover. Uh, right. I, yeah, I, think I agree that they they just need to find a way to make some creativity into it. I also think, as, as I said this morning, a part of this is they've been playing very much base defense, and and it's a lot easier to blitz out of the three man front than it is the four man front where they're in nickel. Um, you know, you're kind of you're kind of pot committed to those four guys rushing, and it's hard to disguise blitzes unless you're going to bring Beanie. Uh, I do really think that'd be something I'd be trying to do. Uh, this week, the Raiders play a whole bunch of 11, 75% 11 personnel. Uh, and with Mayor Hurt, I would assume that they're going to lean into that even more than they normally would. Uh, so uh, I think you kind of know what you're going to get personnel wise. It's not that hard to scheme up against it, but I do think it's going to be a big nickel game. Um, I'm interested to see what happens without DeMonte Casey, too. Will they be able to utilize that heavy nickel package that they like so much? And Casey's been playing the dime as well. Or will they be kind of stuck playing two safeties? They don't really have anybody else that's played a lot of free safety. I guess they could put Terrell Edmonds back there. Um, I, I kind of feel like Beanie Bishop, like there's too much riding on him. Like they, he needs to figure it out. I don't really see a way that they can, given the personnel and, and the and the matchup, like they're they're going to have to lean on him again. I, I don't really see any way to around uh, his struggles last week. Yeah, and you don't want to shake the boat because. Deshaun Elliott in his role has been really good. Um, yeah. Maybe you can throw Elliott back there, but you don't want to do that because it takes him away from the line of scrimmage. And I mean, listen, if that's what they need to do for a week, maybe they do do it. I don't know. But do you trust Rell to take on all of Deshaun's responsibilities? Because that responsibility this week is going to be covering Brock Bowers. And that's has yeah. its own issues. Right. And so I mean, Rell can cover Brock Bowers too, but some like that KZ role is that half field role. Like I, neither of those guys are really well suited for that. Right. I mean, so I, I think that's going to be the big question of what, what they do there. Um, yeah. and, and so my guess is they I'm are with you. Be- I'm with you. I think just f- forget coverage, blitz and play cover one. Like I, if you don't have two free safeties anyway, just take it's the whole cool. cover two out of the equation. Right. I would do different blitzes behind it. Um, I think they have been solid when playing straight up cover one stuff. They did that in the second half against the Colts. Um, 
and I don't think that there's necessarily a Josh Downs that's as twitchy in space that can hurt them that bad. Now that they're going to have to put someone else other than Beanie on Jacoby Myers. I think that's going to be the big one. I don't know how they're going to do it. Myers is almost playing in the slot 70% of the time. I think that is a mismatch. So you're going to have to find ways. Maybe Dante Jackson steps in there or Joey even. I mean, I, I know that they've tried Joey at times following guys into the slot this year. Um, so I think that's going to be a little bit tough, but I think playing some man coverage this week is going to definitely be important for them. Uh, I think that they need to blitz the linebackers more. There's just been, I feel like, part of their struggles the past two weeks has just been they have been too predictable at times schematically. You can't play spot drop cover three all game if you're not getting home, right? That was a huge problem in the first half against the Colts where Shane Steichen just called up all the plays to beat their cover three stuff, chipped both edges, and killed them. They did better in that regard against the Cowboys. But they they mixed it up more against the Cowboys. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They mixed it up a little bit more. I think that was what Minka was talking about was, you know, simplify it because – they weren't they weren't having these miscommunications against Denver and, and Los Angeles and all these other teams, but they had to mix yeah, it up against. Yeah, they they kind of still been there all year. I think they've just kind of gotten away with it a few times. I was talking to Dante Jackson today, and he was saying, uh, like, hey, sometimes miscommunications stand out, and then sometimes like two guys do the wrong thing, and the ball gets thrown right to one of them, and you just go, oh, okay. Like it's like not every miscommunication is obvious to the rest of the world. Like sometimes they're there. And they don't look so bad. I don't think it's been as bad as it has been. Um, because, like, look against the Cowboys when uh, Span Ford goes in motion and just nobody follows him. Um, like, stuff like that. Um, I think the incorporation of motion has really screwed the Steelers the last two weeks. They have struggled with matching motion and stacks and bunches. Um, the Cowboys game, just the busts were so bad. I mean, the 48 yard to Tolbert. Ferguson just coming on the out route, uh, the not following span forward. I just think there were some really bad busts in that game. So if you want to simplify it, I mean, let's play some man to man, go cover one. Um, I think that's fine too, because then it forces O'Connell to make those throws into tight windows, which I think you would also want to say, okay, prove it. You, you can do it. Right. So I, I think it also puts onus on the quarterback. I think so too. It was interesting. I talked to Minka Fitzpatrick today about the Raiders, you know, kind of having it up in the air as to who's going to be their quarterback. And you always hear like, oh, you know, they don't want to give the other team an advantage, you know, like, oh, they want to make them prepare for both guys. And uh, the Raiders decided to to announce their quarterback. And so I asked Minka, it's like, is that a real thing? Like, is it, is it that much harder to prepare for two guys? And he was like, the only time it's harder is if you don't have any tape on one of them. And, the, and, like, it's some guy who might be playing his first game, and you really have to, like, work to figure out what he might be different about. He's like, but we can, you know, we've seen both of these guys. We played against Minshew last year. Like, we don't really care whether they announce it or not. I always thought that's interesting to hear that perspective because we we talk about that so much, and I wondered if it's if there's any truth to it or not. I'm sure it maybe is a little harder if they're like drastically different players, like probably harder on the coaching staff than it is on the players. Right. Because it's like more work for them. I don't think it's any more work for the players though. I will say, I think like the Steelers is week four situation where you go from a guy like Richardson to Flacco probably makes it a little harder just because they're so diametrically different. You're throwing out a bunch of stuff that you put in for Richardson when right. it becomes Flacco. Yeah, absolutely. It's just so different from one of the other. But, like, Minshew and O'Connell are, like – I mean, they're different in some ways, but they are not so drastically different. They are not on the other sides of the earth. Um, they are pretty similar players. Yeah, I agree. we got a question here, and we kind of touched on it already, but uh, I'll, I'll circle back to it here. Vicious Violet LV. Uh, is that LV for Las Vegas? Are you a Vegas-based – Steelers fan, Violet. That would be uh, an interesting perspective to hear from this week. Uh, Violet wants to know, why can't Terrell Edmonds come in for Beanie? Didn't he pair well with Minka? Um, I mean, it's kind of a different position, right? I mean, Beanie's playing that slot corner role. I suppose that you could try to put Terrell Edmonds there, depending on the matchup. If you're playing a team where you're planning to play a bunch of nickel against two tight ends, like, say, maybe... Cleveland or something like that, where they sort of essentially use Njoku as a second wide receiver. Kansas City, uh, you know, when they want to have Gray in the game. Um, I don't think this is really the week for that. Uh, I don't expect a lot of two tight end 
from Vegas, and I really do not want TE on Jacoby Myers. That's a bad matchup. Although Myers uh, has played in the slot less with Devontae Adams out. Also reported today by Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, Devontae Adams will not be playing in this game. We don't even know what team he's going to be on, but just that he's going to be out this week uh, with a hamstring injury. Obviously, trade rumors still soaring around. Uh, it was reported yesterday that seems a little less likely that the Jets and the Saints are there. I don't know, man. If I'm Omar Khan, I'm 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 making this happen. I'm finding a way to get Devontae Adams uh, to Pittsburgh, whether it's before the game or during the game or just bringing him home uh, on, on the flight back. But I think no Adams – Puts Myers outside. Uh, Trey Turner, I assume, or Trey Tucker, I assume, is the guy that that kind of fills in that third wide receiver role with with DJ Turner and Jacoby Myers. Then, but not exactly like a deep, scary wide receiver group. I, I don't know. I don't think TE as a slot corner does a lot for me, though. No, and if you're even talking about the three safety stuff, that brings its own challenges this week. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think Beanie's going to have to be the guy. Uh, they're going to have to figure out if Beanie can do this thing, um, because they need more out of Beanie, man. Uh, they do. A lot of the busts have been on him. It's been rookie mistakes. Um, they can help him out, man. Like, it, it, you can help him out, man, if you need to. Um, but he, he's going to have to be better in zone, reading the stuff. Um, I don't think you will ever want Rel in the slot, really, unless it's as, as a traditional overhang or, as you mentioned, um, that three safety nickel doing different things there. Um, so, yeah, I, this is a, an issue the Steelers are going to run into this week unless Beanie plays really well. Um, that's going to be what they need. So Beanie's like a huge X factor in this game, honestly, on the defensive side of the football. Um, this has to be like his get-right game because, honestly, I mean, I, if I were them, I would be trying to get Myers against him on those third downs. But for most of the game, if you play on first and second down, he's probably going to be seeing either Tucker or Turner, and those are guys he should be able to cover. Um, as a starting slot corner in the NFL. So th this is really a big game for Beanie Bishop more than it is, I think, trying to put Rel in there uh, and trying to figure something out. Um, you know, if you're that worried about Beanie, I mean, you have another slot option on the, the depth chart, uh, really, if yeah. you really want to. Right. Yeah. But, Thomas Graham, to me, like, can play. I, I don't think that's a crazy – I mean, it's probably not going to work this week because of the – like they need to bring up a, a running back and a linebacker, right? And so, like, where do they get the extra roster spot? I don't know. They'd have to cut somebody to to add somebody, uh, figure it out. But like, I think Thomas Graham can play if they if they don't like if they're losing confidence in Beanie Bishop. It is easier to replace Beanie Bishop than it is to change the whole defense to minimize the role of the slot cornerback. Right. I mean, I guess the one move would be placing one of the edge rushers on IR and and bringing Graham up to the 53, but um, we'll kind of see how that all goes. But I think this week's going to be bigger on Beanie than it is, say, okay, how can we replace Beanie? I think Beanie's just going to have to figure it out. Yeah, I agree. I also think it's fair to just give him, like, this run and, and let him figure it out. Like, they don't have clearly better – like, Beanie figuring it out is clearly the best option. I, mean, I feel like that about a lot of the things that have gone wrong for the Steelers this year – like outside of maybe quarterback, I don't see a lot of positions where like things aren't happening well, but I'm just like, yeah, bench him, cut him. I mean, they need to trade for a wide receiver. They could maybe go back to Russell Wilson, but like the guys that aren't playing well, I think just need to play like Patrick Queen. He, he can be better, but there's no better option than not playing Patrick Queen. Najee Harris right. can be better, but especially with the injuries, like there's no better option than just not than just playing Nazi Harris. Uh, same thing with a lot of the offensive linemen. Like they, they just need guys to figure stuff out. Yeah, same thing with Broderick Jones. They yeah, just there need you to go. There's no one better uh play than Broderick Jones. Um, so like that that's the thing. They are running into this. Injuries have thinned the herd significantly for them down the depth chart. They have more injuries probably at this time this year than they have had in past years, um, for sure. Just because of the all the O line injuries, the edge rushers being all down. just concentrated at the same positions: two running right. backs, three edge rushers, three offensive linemen. Like it's four right, it is. Line. It is just Great. hit, hit those like boom, 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 and it has been significant because it's been one after the other, just right, right in the succession. Uh, right, like you lose Warren next week, and the the next week Patterson goes down, and then Herbig's out for the season, and then. 
Faltanu's done for the regular season, and Daniels goes down. It's just been boom, 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 boom. And so I think you're in that same spot with Beanie here, um, just having to figure it out. I think so, too. Nick, anything else you want to bring up before we uh, get you out of here? Um, I don't think that there's anything uh, too big to, to bring up. Yeah, um, today's practice was eventful, I guess, in its own way, right? So we talked about most of it. There you go. Uh, Nick, tell people where they can find all your stuff now that you've, uh, you know, stabbed us on the back and, you know, <laughs> just created all this horrendous drama and hatred by leaving Steelers now. Uh, t- tell everybody where they can find your stuff and, uh, you know, we'll, we won't, f- we'll, we'll, we'll forgive them if they have to cheat on us a little bit to go check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could find me uh, at Twitter at FairballFB. Make sure to check the stuff out at penlive.com as well, everybody. There you go. And uh, make sure you do also go over to SteelersNow.com. Check out all our stuff. DB has a uh, a nice piece about the big problems with the Steelers in this two-game losing streak. You need to be an SN Plus subscriber for that. Use promo code Allen10. Get 10% off. Works out to be about 4 bucks a month. Not only do you get all the best stuff from me, DB, John Prado, Dan King Garcia, the whole Sports Now crew, but you also get an ad-free viewing experience, which let me tell you what, is well worth the $4. Uh, also make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications here on the YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive, Steelers Morning Rush. If you're listening somewhere else, please give us a five-star review and su- su- subscribe to our podcast feed there. Till next time, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and enjoy. <laughs>